How many of you in here like weekends? What about maternity leave or paternity leave? You know anybody who's used it? Or have you used it yourself? What about a pension? Are you working towards a pension? Or are you receiving a pension? Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and our distinguished guest. I want you to know that I work for a union. I work for the International Association of Sheet Metal, Air, Rail, and Transportation Workers. Yes, it's a mouthful. And the acronym is SMART. You ought to try to introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Tom. I'm SMART. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that unions have a bad reputation, and they probably always will. There's probably even people in this room who don't like unions. But I hope today, just for a moment, that I change your mind because I hope this is just misinformation. Remember when I mentioned those weekends? Weekends were brought to you by unions. Years ago, before everybody in this room started working, even you, Harry. <laughs> so if we started a list, things that unions brought us, whether you work for a union or not, those weekends would be on there. The 40 hour work week would be on there, which equals the eight hour work day. We would also have vacation. How many in here like vacation? I mentioned those pensions. It's too bad Beverly's not here because I know she's drawing attention. Did you know that it was unions? who were very instrumental in starting Social Security in 1935. Everybody in this room pays into Social Security, but one person. That one person is me. I don't pay into Social Security because I fall into the Railway Labor Act, and I pay into the railroad retirement at a higher rate than everybody in here does. So enjoy your Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> On that list, so that list that we have, of things that our union provided, we have five things. Let me just give you some other things and we'll decide if they belong on that list. I mentioned maternity leave. Katie, I believe that you had, you were on maternity leave. Who's gonna protect your child when it becomes eight, nine, 10 years old from having to work in the sweatshop? That's child labor law. What about FMLA, the Family Medical Leave Act? How about OSHA? Occupational Safety Health Act. How about whistleblower protection law? What about the American Disability Act? I know that everybody in here benefits from these. And you have probably figured out that all of these items belong on that list that is union provided. Whether you work for a union or not, they're there. I won't point any fingers in this group, but there's also discrimination of age in employment. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of you have noticed the similarities to everything that I have talked about, and that's the their congressional act. Unions learned a long time ago, just like businesses, that the battles aren't necessarily won by walking back and forth on that picket line. The battles are won in Washington, D.C. in Congress. My point today is no matter what your occupation or what you think of unions, your life has been touched for the better by a hardworking, possibly even the life that has been lost, of a union. Yes, I said lives have been lost for things that we take for granted today and we don't even give a second thought. I want you, when you leave here today, when you see something on TV about a union, I'm hoping that when you see that, you think, Wow, I know Union Thug. And Tom's not that bad. <laughs> At least I hope you think I'm not that bad. <laughs> the 
So I'll leave you with one last thought. And that is, did you root for a team for the World Series? Are you going to root for a team at the Super Bowl? Just remember, you're rooting for you, Mr. Tokenak.